Hey, K-pop Tebak Show listeners, this is your boy, your dude, your day one, Eric. Now, we have a very special episode for you guys today. It's the first episode of its type on this show, and it's going to be an ongoing series where we have producers of all your favorite K-pop tracks break down their latest and greatest hits. It's a little different, but different is good. Hope you guys enjoy. Here's the K-pop Tebak Show. Hi, I'm Caesar, And I'm Louis, And we are the producers behind the song... Sim Salabim by Red Velvet. And you're listening to K-Pop Dayback Show behind the song series. Sim Salabim! So you can start. Uh, thank you, Louis, my partner. You know, we met, uh, me and Louis, we met when we were six years old. Mm. So it's like 23 years, best friends. Yeah. Which is crazy because we're 29 this year, so that's a long time. Old. Old, old yeah. friends. To make it really short, I uh, grew up like uh, having a lot of music around me and uh, playing in rock bands and stuff. And uh, I heard Green Day when I was like 13 and loved uh, I heard Basket Case and I was like, what the hell is this? I, my ears didn't even know what, what was happening. Uh, and uh, still today, I love that song. So I fell in love with songwriting and then me and Louis, we were in bands together and we, we went to the same high school, music high school. And uh, yeah, played together and then we moved separate, like we moved away from each other for a while. But you went to LA also? Yeah, I lived there for a while. Yeah. But So we were like on separate parts for a while, separate paths. Yeah, because me and Daniel have a really different musical background. Like Daniel says, he was more into rock and pop and stuff like that. And I started with jazz and boogie woogie blues stuff, more that background. So I played like jazz piano from when I was seven years old, maybe. So after high school, I went to more that direction I wanted to be a musician and wanted to play with like big artists or play in jazz clubs and stuff like that but I also fell in love with songwriting so then me and Daniel started writing together more when he went to the yeah the music makers school I was in a songwriting school a really famous one in in Sweden called uh, Musik Makarna it's like music makers in north Sweden but then we teamed up again when we were like 20 years old or something and then we started like doing it like professionally kind of like more like focused you know yeah. like before it was more for fun mm. uh, when we write music together it's it's uh, it's always different I think mm. you know but we know each other so well you know like mm. as friends so it's like we kind of know what the other one knows and what the best part of that person is when we started writing we had more different like aspects that we contributed with when we write music nowadays we have both developed our different like strength yeah yeah like in the beginning maybe you had more lyrical yeah. ideas than i had and i had more maybe more of the chords and structural parts and then the melodies i think we kind of did together from yeah. the start also yeah but uh, right now it feels like we know each other pretty well so we can we're, we're always like open to the other one's idea like okay it's not like no i'll do this thing i'm the best at this or you know it's no. always like oh yeah we the one who has the, the idea, coolest yeah. thing or whatever. You know? Exactly. It's also like that with tracks. Yeah. When producing just the music for the tracks, sometimes Daniel has maybe a drum beat, shows me and I think it sounds really good and then maybe I put some chords on that and then we do some melodies. and Yeah, like, so we're like 50-50 yeah. on always everything. Develops. We're too excited about music so we can't stop learning, you know. So, uh, we wrote this song for a very long time ago. Yeah. It was like, uh, just when we you know, heard about K-pop. So, like... We Six were like, years ago, yeah. I think. So, we kind of, we heard about I Got A Boy, you know, Girls' Generation. So, we were very inspired by that song. Mm. So, uh, we didn't know much about Red Velvet at that time, actually. But we wrote the yeah. song and like, yeah, this will be awesome for Girls' Generation or something like that. I think it was before Red Velvet actually was formed. Yeah, actually, I think. Yeah, yeah, probably. So we wrote the song just like a, we thought it was a cool song with a cool title. And it got picked up by Red Velvet a few years after. So like the attention was not Red Velvet, but SM liked the song pretty fast. And then they kept the song for many years. And in the meantime, we had another like song with Red Velvet. Yeah, before. Yeah, a Red Flavor. <laughs> Maybe people think that like, oh yeah, they, they made a new song because of the Red Flavor success or whatever. 
but it was not. Yeah, that's not the case before. at all. <laughs> it's the other way around, actually. Mm. So Simsalabim is abracadabra, kind of, yeah. but in in other language. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, funny because it's like in Sweden, it's pretty famous, you know. Like I think in Europe, maybe it's more like a common mm. phrase that people have heard. There is like a history behind it, like an old German magician or something. Yeah, like we're that. not really sure, yeah. but we we hear it a lot in Sweden. It's kind of Simsalabim, you say, and yeah. when you do magic, like when we're kids and grow up yeah. here. Simsalabim. Oh no, not the levitation trick again. Sim, sim, salabim. So for us it was like natural. We're like, ah, that's a cool title. We th- yeah, we actually thought it was a common like, expression in English also. We didn't even know that it was just yeah, yeah. maybe European or... So, you know, when SM heard about it, the they and ours were like, what the hell does it mean? And like, are we singing this correctly? Or like, yeah, they asked how us, should we like, pronounce this? Yeah. So we had to actually have to tell them how to pronounce it when they... For the vocals and everything. And we don't even know if the pronunciation is right. Yeah, because we exactly. have a said instead of an S. So so it's kind of made up in a cool way. Yeah, it's more like attack yeah. on the more zim, like, salabim, yeah, zim, 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 zim. Maybe it should be saying a sim, salabim, sim, sim. Who yeah, knows? I don't know. But we don't care. It looks it's a lot cool of fun. With the Z. <laughs> I think like Irene, she really like nailed that sim, salabim part also. Like with her vocals, sim salabim is like sounds really cool. If I remember correctly, we started with the the bell sounds, right? Yeah, those in the intro there. Ding dong, ding 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 ding. Yeah, they're behind like the yeah the intro and also in the sim salabim sim sim salabim hook in the chorus, uh, we have those bells and that that started the whole song yeah our name was d3o in the beginning yeah back uh, then before we would call ourselves Caesar and louis with the third guy olipop yeah he's a great producer as well he, he he's done a lot of k-pop and uh yeah he's stockholm based so we co-produced it yeah. with, with him uh, but uh, yeah so we found that bell sound and we went crazy and like started screaming and yeah this is awesome and and then we developed it from there. Yeah, and I think Olaf also had like the Sims Labim title, and then we all started like in the room, started developing the hook, and it came out kind of naturally. I yeah. think we yeah. just kind of vibed on the the rhythms with yeah. the Sims Labim, yeah. and then we. And back in those days, we were like, this was the first year I think we were working as like professional songwriters. So we were like so like our energy was insane. Like yeah. when we wrote music. We were like, you know, three guys in a studio just like going crazy like monkeys. Because mm-hmm. we actually have the the actual recording from that session. <laughs> so, and then you, I think you can tell in the song. The yeah, the, en- song the, is, energy the energy is of like, the song is so high because of, I think, how we wrote it also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And on all the parts and we, we just experimented with yeah, yeah different uh, styles and how we yeah. got into a chorus and get, like all the different hooks yeah the hook is really special i think because it goes down in not to like a traditional chorus and i think that was what we thought when we wrote it also yeah like it's more laid back more chill and just like really kind of annoying you know you have that <laughs> sim salabim sim sim all the time and you have that track in the background with a really low sub like the the low frequencies so you get kind of that drop Yeah, exactly. Feeling. Also, I love the the last chanting. Same sort of people when they were like ah, screaming. I think that's when we go re- it's really punk, mm. like punk rock. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a weird. It's like a really weird, weird part, actually. Yeah, it is. If you think about it, the song has maybe two choruses actually. Because if you think about the sim salabim sim sim, that's one of the chorus parts, but yeah. also the melody. It comes back a lot of times in the song also. Yeah. It's not a traditional songwriting style. Like every idea was like welcome. We just like went nuts, you know, Mm. which is like was a lot of fun. Sometimes we write for 
like a strong lead w- when we get from the label. Like we want a song like this, and they have references maybe, and then we go on that direction. We we try to not think too much like about if it's like boy and or girl song. You know, we just go with the flow. But mm. obviously, it happens naturally too when you write for boys or girls. So, but if we just write a song like Sims of Bim song, we just wrote a song. We didn't have any leads. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. I think most of the times those songs are the best for us when we don't have the. You just go for it. Yeah, we just write something that feels. Yeah cool just have fun mm. so you don't feel restricted like create <coughs> creativity yeah Cre- creatively <laughs> creatively yeah creatively it's uh, all, always different with different labels but with the big labels like sm and others they usually have in-house vocal engineers and in-house mixers and everything like that so we basically send them the the files of our production and the vocal arrangement and then they Sometimes they change it a bit, or and sometimes they copy the whole arrangement, but with their own singers, of course, and their new lyrics, the Korean lyrics. For this song, we changed some parts. I think the yeah the bridge part, we did like two or three versions. I remember they wanted like a high note for one of the singers to hit. I think in the end of the the bridge before yeah. the last chorus, and so we changed that a bit. And I also think we did a different chorus also one time, but then they, we got back to the original Sim Salabim chorus. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so we definitely tried some different parts. Yeah, and uh, we added some stuff like in last minute in the production, yeah. and some stuff didn't, they didn't keep, and yeah. But the vocals, like the final, the final version, we it was just like you know Real close. finished. Yeah. yeah. We didn't even hear a demo. It was just released and it sounded amazing. And we trust SM a lot because yeah. they're, they're amazing, like they have a great vocal, vocal recorder, like producers and yeah. stuff. So, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of trust in them. Mm. It's like it always sounds amazing. So maybe we've been on the same showcase because we've been a couple of those, but mm. we have never met no. them personally. I think we met FX and Ghost Generation, we met XO, XO and also, all yeah. of them, but not not but, Red yeah, We would love to meet them though. Yeah, they seem really yeah. nice. The whole world right now feels more global, music-wise. But I think K-pop is a really strong brand and like has a really big push in the world. So probably that's why K-pop is naturally blends with the U.S. market right now. I yeah, feel like it's a, like very inspiring to be a songwriter in the world right now because you mm. can do so much and hit like a international stage from so many ways. Yeah, I think in the future maybe it's going to be even more. Like countries involved in the like the global music scene, I think exactly. It feels like a cool step to mix like with Asian culture and and the U.S. and like the European, of course. But like those two worlds meet right now is really cool. Yeah, since when we started K-pop, it was like people didn't know too much about it, you know. But yeah. now we see like they're hitting the Spotify top mm. ten lists, and there's been it, so cool following. Yeah. yeah, it's like people talking about it here in Sweden, you know. Like yeah. my girlfriend's mother. She's like a fan, you know? So it's pretty crazy. Yeah, and my grandpa talked about K-pop also. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. It's like I heard this on the, the radio yeah, about yeah, yeah. K-pop you're doing. And I was shocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the media is like f- doing a lot of press about it here too. Yeah. It's amazing. We yeah. love it. And then we're proud to have been a part of it for a long time. So it feels like we've been part of the growth. Yeah, you know? and then of course you feel like you need to evolve with the K-pop also yeah, yeah. all the time. We can't be on the same mindset as we were like back in the days so we have to be really you know challenge yeah. yeah challenge ourselves and try to take it to new levels yeah maybe we should start a k-pop group you and me me and daniel should start one yeah, yeah. called the angry monkeys or something <laughs> <laughs> angry <laughs> monkeys yeah, <I> don't... <laughs> <laughs> well do you have something more to add about the k-pop in the no it's the amazing world? it's just positive mm. i'm a positive guy I hope you guys check out and support our new song Sim Salabim by Red Velvet. You can find us on Caesar underscore Louie on Instagram and then you can find our new stuff and what's going on. Once again, this has been the K-pop Dayback Show behind the song series. Thank you all for listening. Yeah. And you are listening to K-pop Dayback Show behind the 
Shoe? <laughs> Behind the shoe. <laughs> Behind the socks. <laughs> he wrote shoe. That's all correct. Uh, okay, sorry, let's do it again. Uh, once again, this has been the K-pop Dayback Show Behind the Show series. Songs. Behind the Show <laughs> songs. <laughs> I just read what it says. Oh, you wrote shoe earlier. <laughs> Behind the shoe. <laughs> it's autocorrect. Autocorrect. <laughs>